What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of my favorite Android tablets ever created, and this is known as the Samsung Galaxy Tab S6. Not to be confused with the Tab S6 Lite, and some of you might be thinking this came out a few years ago, and it definitely did. We're actually right on the cusp of getting the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8, and I'm personally looking really forward to that tablet. I will be doing some videos on the channel, but when it comes to the pricing of these newer tablets, they are quite expensive. I mean, $650 to $1,050 coming in with the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8, and the Tab S6 wasn't cheap either when it was initially released. But this still holds some value, and right now you can actually pick these up refurbished on eBay for around $250, and last week I saw one going for $229, it was the 128 gigabyte model. And like I mentioned, when you're searching on eBay for the Tab S6, don't get it confused with the S6 Lite. This is a totally different beast here, and in my opinion, it's still very viable for gaming, emulation, and media consumption in 2022. And on my channel, I've done a lot of reviews on Chinese tablets, ranging from $100 up to $300, and some of those tablets are actually pretty decent, but when it comes to DRM support, the Galaxy Tab S6 definitely has you covered with all of your favorite streaming apps. You can go HD with it, and that's one of the main downsides to picking up a Chinese tablet. 99% of the time, it's just not going to have the correct DRM built in, and it's not going to perform like the S6 does. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Tab S6 in 2022 for gaming, emulation, media content, and even game streaming. So when it comes down to the specs, there's actually three different variants of the Tab S6. You can get one with 64 gigabytes of storage and 4 gigs of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage and 6 gigs of RAM, or 256 gigabytes of storage and 8 gigs of RAM. But all three of them do have a micro SD card slot, and I've tested up to a 400 gigabyte card. I just happen to have the 128 gigabyte version with six gigs of RAM here. And for the CPU, you're gonna get the Snapdragon 855 with either model, a 10.5 inch Super AMOLED display at 1600 by 2560. It's only running at 60 Hertz, AC Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0, a 7,000 milliamp hour battery, Android 11, it's been updated from Android 9 when it was initially released. And this does support Samsung DeX. On the tablet's built-in screen, or over USB Type-C to HDMI. So first things first, I'm a huge fan of these Super AMOLED displays. I think they look absolutely beautiful. When it comes to the UI performance, it's gonna be super smooth with that Snapdragon 855. It's definitely not a new Snapdragon Gen 1, but uh, overall, for handling Android itself, it works great. You do have access to Google Play or the Samsung Galaxy App Store if you're into that. You can actually still get Fortnite from here. And like I mentioned, one of the most important things for like a media consumption device is that DRM. And basically, this is level one, which is the highest level you can get, and it allows you to play HD content from streaming apps like Netflix, HBO Max, you got Hulu, whatever your favorite streaming app is, this will do it in HD. A lot of the cheaper Android tablets on the market right now don't have any widevine built in, so you can only do standard definition from those apps. And with something like YouTube here, the 855 even handles 4K. Now this isn't a 4K display, but we're running at 4K 60. We have zero drop frames if you take a close look at Stats for Nerds up in the top left hand corner. Another thing that the Tab S6 has going for it is the quad speaker setup that they have built in. We've got two speakers on each side. It does support Dolby Atmos. And for being such a thin and light tablet, it actually puts out some pretty decent bass like it sits. So when it comes to media playback on this device with the built-in screen and built-in speakers, you're going to have a great time with it. Now it's time to move over to some native Android gaming. And first on the list, we have Call of Duty Mobile. High settings, frame rate is set to max, and there is a built-in frame counter on these Galaxy tablets. I know it's a bit hard to see, but this is sitting at 60. Got a little arrow pointing to it right now. This also does an amazing job with games like Asphalt 9, Minecraft, and even PUBG. And one of the harder games to run right now on Android is Genshin Impact. So here it is at high settings 60 FPS. Unfortunately, the Snapdragon 855 just can't handle this at high settings 60. But if you wanted to go to very high settings and run it at 30, no problem at all. Or turn some of the settings down to low and medium, you can definitely get a constant 60 out of it. But if you want the best visual fidelity out of this game here, very high settings, lock it at 30, and you're good to go. The Snapdragon 855 can handle it just fine like this. Yeah. 
And the final game I wanted to test here was Battle for Bikini Bottom. Now this is a port coming over to Android. We're at ultra settings, 60 FPS, and it'll run this game great. I mean, this definitely looks just like it does on consoles and PCs. So the S6 has you covered on native Android gaming and even cloud gaming. GeForce Now, Stadia, xCloud, you're going to be good to go. This does have AC Wi-Fi built in. And if you wanted to use something like Steam Link to stream from your own PC or even Moonlight, you're going to have a great time with it. This is xCloud running Forza Horizon 5 over Wi-Fi. But now it's time to move over to my favorite part of these videos, emulation testing. And first on the list, we have Dreamcast using ReDream. We're at 1920 by 1440. And by the way, with these games that do support controllers, I'm using an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth. Dreamcast isn't going to give you any issues. As long as the game's compatible with the ReDream or the Flycast emulator, you can run it even upscale. Same thing with PSP. So here we have PPSSPP, Chains of Olympus, and I'll show you here, I'm using the OpenGL back in. 3x resolution, no hacks, it runs great. And with easier to emulate PSP games, you can go up to 5 and 7x resolution. So it's been a little while since I've tested Citra, the 3DS emulator on a Snapdragon 855. And with the updates, it's performing much better than it ever has on the 855. I'm actually set at 2x resolution with this emulator. Now there were a few games that I tested I had to drop it down to 1x, but overall performance is pretty decent with Citra. Moving over to the Dolphin emulator. Now this does GameCube and Wii. Here we have a Wii game running. We're at the native resolution. I'm using the Vulcan back in, and I will admit that there are some games that the 855 still struggles with, but there are a lot of tweaks that you can do inside of the Dolphin settings to get them to run much better. But when it comes to GameCube games like Wind Waker or even Mario Sunshine, this will run them just fine. And finally, we have some PS2 emulation using the new Ether SX2 PS2 emulator for Android. So when it comes to this emulator here, I've had really good luck with the Snapdragon 870, the 845, the 855, and one of the best on the market right now for this emulator, in my experience, is the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. So this doesn't perform as well as something with a Snapdragon 870, but you can still get away by playing a lot of these games at full speed on the 855. And again, we're talking about used prices here. Something like this coming in at $250. A tablet with the Snapdragon 870 is anywhere from $500 to $700 right now as I'm making this video. But I gotta say, one of my favorite features of the Tab S6 is USB Type-C to HDMI. I've got a cheap adapter here from Amazon. I've also got a mouse and keyboard plugged in. And as soon as I plug this into my monitor or TV, we can mirror the screen. It looks great. We've got the cutoffs on the side there. Not a big deal. I mean, you can definitely game on it like this. But the Tab S6 also has DeX built in. And with this, you can actually use DeX on the built-in screen. But personally, I like using it over HDMI. And if you're not familiar with Samsung DeX, it's built into the Galaxy S line of phones from the S8 on up and the Tab S line. And basically what this does is it turns your Android device into a desktop computer, as you can see here. And you can still use the device like a tablet while you're running DeX on the other screen, but this is just really good for a bigger screen, a mouse, and a keyboard. It also supports controllers, and we can go total full screen with our games here. So we'll just test out the port of Dead Cells for Android. And I've got that Xbox One controller connected over Bluetooth. And you can still watch your favorite movies. You can game on it. You can do emulation. It's really up to you. It also supports multi-app. So, you know, if you want to watch a YouTube video while you're editing a Word document, you can do that on the big screen. So overall, if you're in the market for a good Android tablet, I can definitely suggest the Tab S6 for a decent price in 2022. I still think it really holds its own. We do have that older Snapdragon 855, but when you compare this to some of the Chinese tablets that come in around the same price, this thing trumps it in every single area. Screen, speakers, DRM, and performance. Like you saw in this video, it does a great job with native Android gaming. Emulation, cloud gaming, you name it, this thing can definitely do it, and you're not going to break the bank at that $250 price tag. If we take a look at the new Samsung Galaxy Tab S8, it's going to be better in every single way. 
but that's an $850 to a $1,000 tablet, and a lot of people just don't want to spend that much on an Android device. So if you're in the market for a good Android tablet, you don't want to break the bank, and you don't mind buying used or refurbished, I can highly recommend the Tab S6 in 2022. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below, and I'm going to leave a few eBay links in the description in case you're interested in picking one of these up. But like always, thanks for watching.